Hey, what's up everybody? It's Julius with the Hookup Tackle, Hippie. We're back here in store and we're gonna talk about how we locate and target fish when love is in the air and you know fish are spawning, there's cruisers, you know, clear water, there's lots of stuff happening. Come on, let's talk about it. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the Hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just want to elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. First things first, this time of year, I know some of you guys are still frozen over, but for us, late February, early March, things start to heat up. All of the bass you're starting to catch are, you know, full of eggs, that kind of stuff, right? So they're, they're getting ready to pull up and spawn a lot of these bays and pockets. Uh, there's a lot of activity and life happening, right? So how, how do we catch these fish? The number one way I like to, you know, cover water in the spring and get a sense of, you know, where the fish are, there's certain, areas of the lake you know or sections of the lake that the fish pull up first right and over the years you know you know that or when you get to a new body of water you know you kind of just have to explore but that's what i'm looking for is a zone where are these fish up first because there's one area that's got them up and the rest of the lake you know is still in that process of fish pulling up in the early spring like we are now well the first thing i do is once i locate you know i'm going down the bank and i'm throwing a big swim bait big to me is is little for jeff yeah i don't uh, know about this yeah so <laughs> it's not something i do all the time i'm not this trophy hunter guy you know <laughs> it's just a good bait you know to kind of get a sense of what's happening in your area get some followers and you definitely catch a few fish doing it too i don't do anything crazy i just throw you know a rising sun i like a line through style bait this is about as big as i'll ever go mm -hmm. uh it's almost a little intimidating right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right so this is where I like to throw, just to kind of get a sense of the area. I like bright colors. So we have, you know, clear water and like the fish just get fired up over bright stuff. So, you know, I like to throw things like this. This is an eight inch mag draft. Again, a little intimidating, right? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I like the, the bright colors. It just draws their attention in this clear water. Do they get fired up? You know, and they come flying off their bed or if they're cruising, it, it just teaches me about what's, what's happening. So that's the first bait I pick up is, you know, like a seven or eight inch line through swim bait and get a feel for what's going on. Flip that bitch, dude. <laughs> Flip that bitch. <laughs> yeah! Flip that bitch, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, <laughs> on the swimmer. Boom! <laughs> Swimmy. So, you you know you were just talking about this in the store. Throw yeah, that swim bait around and that's it, man. We got a little breeze going, so we can't really look around. So we throw that swimmer and uh, kind of get a feel of what's going on. And yeah, this one decided get, huh? to bite it a little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so say I, I pull into a cut, right? I'm throwing that swim bait and I've got a few followers, you know, maybe catch one good one on it. And then I, I'm looking around and I see fish cruising. I put that swim bait down, you know, and I, and I back off. And if I see fish in the area, I don't like to get close to them. So I back off and I like to throw a couple different baits at them. If it's flat calm, then I'll back off and I'll throw like a, a dick rig or, or a wacky rig Cinco or something like that. It's that Yamamoto Nico worm, that's a good one. But just something finessey where I can fire it at them and get, get those fish to bite. You wanna try to get as many bites possible in these areas, you know, when they're just up cruising. Now, if there's a little bit of ripple on the water and you know they're up there, this is my favorite bait. This is a West Coast thing we do out here and that's burning a skinny dipper. 
So if I know some fish are up in there in that cut, I'll make a long cast with this dipper, eight to one gear ratio reel, and burn this thing as fast as possible, like waking it on the surface. So if you've got a little uh, turbulence or a little disturbance on the water, I can get those fish to go on that skinny dipper. Are you fishing trees or you know mostly rocks when you're in these cuts, or does it really matter? It doesn't really matter, dude. I, I think when the fish pull up, they have a certain area that they pull up in. You just kind of got to go cruising. You can't you can't stay in an area and wait for something to happen. It's a lot of visual for us anyway. You know, I know some of you guys have dirtier water, so it's more about getting bites and stuff like that. But for us, you can literally see the areas, you know. So you, I pull into a cove, and if I look around and there's no fish, then I'm not going to fish it. Like this time of year, it's all visual for us. So the whole idea with those swim baits is just to cover as much water as you possibly can this That's time it. of year. Yeah, just cover as much water as possible. And maybe some places you can look around or there is wind and you can't see. It will teach you. You get a couple followers on that point. You go around that point. You start looking around and, oh, there's one on a bed. Oh, there's a couple cruising. Fire my worm out there. Catch a couple doing that. And then, oh, there's one on a bed. And pull my little drop shot out and catch that one on a bed. And it's just like fast action. So I'm rolling down the bank with that big swimmer and just to like see what's going on. And then like I just explained, I have those other rods for this time in the spring. There's just all kinds of shit going on. Yeah. You know, there's fish up, there's, you know, fish out a little bit. It's like run and gun. Right. So another good bait, if it's a little windy, other than the swim bait that I like to do to just kind of give me a sense of what's going on uh, and catch some fish on reaction this time of year. That's a jerk bait. I like a little bit bigger one this time of year. The Edo Shiner is my go-to jerk bait in the spring spawn time. This one just gets chewed, dude. It's the one I, I grab. So why a bigger jerk bait over like I think your regular this time, vision? Yeah, I think this time of year, just a bigger profile. They just don't want the small finesse shit. They want a big profile. It's just, I don't know. That's what I've always went with. I feel like you get more bites on, on the bigger profile. So bed fishing, like I said, you're you're throwing either the jerk bait or the swim bait. You roll into a pocket. Oh, there's one on a bed. I always have a bed fishing rod tied on this time of year. Grab my bed fishing rod. So there's a couple things I like to do. If it's a big female or a spawning pair, I back off, and the first thing I do is I bury my hook into this bait to where you know she can't really get the hooks that well right like in a tournament situation like sometimes i don't really like hooking bed fish on this because they could get hooked on the outside or something goofy and you don't you don't want that right so i try to just kind of bury the hook in there and i fire this thing in this is the first bait that i'm going to put inside of that bed just to see what i'm dealing with usually that big profile gets them fired up so i flip that in there see you know how they're reacting to it if she's smoking it every single flip let her do that a couple times let her get pissed off and then i go in something like a texas rig just a white bait and white is so you can see it it's not for the fish or anything like that it's just to help you physically see your bait so either a white texas rig craw or a small drop shot with a bright little swim bait anything like that after you've got her fired up with that swim bait, dude, you drop that little bed bait in there and it's game over. So we were talking before this, on your approach to, you have a big female and the male's there as well. Yeah. What do you do in this situation? So a lot of people have different opinions on this. For me, this is what I've always lived by and it's done me right in the past. If you've got a, a male bass and a female, I'm gonna, obviously the male's gonna try to eat the bait first, right? He's gonna protect the nest. He wants nothing near his female and nothing near his nest. So he's gonna try every, everything in his willpower to get that bait out of there, right? I'm not gonna set the hook on this bass. I'm gonna let him drive my bait out every single time I flip it in there, let him drive off and spit it out. You know, let him swim off, spit it out. Eventually what this is gonna do is that female is gonna get pissed off and she's basically gonna say, hey, you're not doing your job. You know, you're you're not protecting our nest and she's gonna swim over and eat that bait. So if you catch the male and put it in your live well, like some guys do, there is a chance that next flip, like if the female's physically trying to, to take it away from the male while he's doing that, then there is a possibility you could grab him, make the next flip and catch that female. But if that male is taking that bait off every flip and the female's just hanging out over here and you catch that male, she'll never move back up. Like to get her to move up to that bed, you wanna just piss that male off as much as possible until she goes, okay, you're not doing your job. And then she pulls up, you know, and then she grabs the bait. So 
if you can, I would avoid trying to catch the male. Like I said, there is some situations where it works, but most of the time I don't catch that male and I get that big female. With all that being said, why we do that is sometimes like if that female's not moved up, right? If she's off like a few feet away from the bed, which most of the time they are, right? And you catch that male, she's just gonna be done. Like sometimes they're just, that's it. That's, she's spooked and she's gone. You'll never see her again. She'll never pull up and spawn and that's the end of it. Not sure exactly why, but that's just, that's what I've always seen over the years. But that's the important part of of, of catching not, them, yeah. Of not catching the male. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, you could blow, you know, an eight to ten pounder because you swung on a two pounder, you yeah. know, because you got itchy. So, yeah. As far as boat positioning, I like to be as far away as possible, you know, where I can still physically see what I'm doing, but not to where I'm right on top of the fish. I always see guys, they're powerful down and they're literally like dropping down on bed fish like that. It's like, dude, oh, it took me 20 minutes to catch it. Yeah, because your boat was on top of her. I roll into a cut, right? Oh, there she is, there's there's a pair. Okay, you know, I'm like 20 feet away at this point. And I try to get in a place, you know, like shadows play a big deal. Like you, you gotta think, you're in a 21 foot boat or, or you know, doesn't matter. You could be on the bank, You're you know this, like shadows, dude. If you're standing, if there's a, if you're just fishing a pond or something and there's a bed right up on the bank, you're not gonna walk right up there and drop your bait in. That fish is gonna spook. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna try to stay as far away as possible from the bank or like walk up or whatever to get that bait to him so he doesn't spook. Same thing in a boat. You're just trying to keep your distance so they, they are still doing their thing and they don't even know you're there and just kind of be stealthy. As far as line goes, I'm always throwing a fluorocarbon. We fish pressured clear water places. So I like to have the most invisible line I can get away with. So if I'm throwing, if I'm throwing a swimmer, like I throw like 18 sniper or, you know, like on these drop shots and stuff like that, like a lot of people try to feed them braid. They're like, oh, you, you know, like try to get away with the heaviest gear possible. It's like, dude, it's no different than, you know, a pressured bed fish in an area by a boat ramp or something that everybody's trying to flip on it. Like, dude, I've caught fish that literally there's a graveyard of baits you know, <laughs> like around it, like you just pull out your rod with six pound fluoro, you know, and a little drop shot, you'll catch that fish, you know? So I guess it just depends on how much pressure they've had or that, but always fluorocarbon this time of year. I always see guys 80 pound braid and a flipping stick, you know, and a big white jig. It's like, dude, that's ridiculous. So some of you guys have this royalty of deep water, clear, some of you Northern guys. For us, I've caught bed fish as deep as 20, five feet, you know, because we have that available to us. So if you do have that, my approach kind of changes a little bit. You can't back off 25 feet and see them. So what I do is pull up to it, get kind of on top, you know, we're kind of breaking the rules up to, as if to they were shallow. But you know, if you've got a bed fish down there 15, 20 feet deep, what I like to do is kind of just crawl, stroll up there, you know, bump my trolling motor where I'm not spooking them, kind of take a look, see what I'm dealing with. And then a lot of the times what I'll do is once I know where it's at, I'll kind of back off just a little bit. And I almost don't want to see those deeper ones. They're easier to catch if you just back off now that you know where the bed is and stuff. And you just pitch your drop shot in there, or, you know, your, your Cinco or whatever, let it get all the way down. And they'll eat like first or second flip because they, they don't get a lot of pressure. So obviously you're going to cast past the bed and work it in. You know, you never just wanted to plop it right into the bed. Um, once I work the bait up to it, I'm always just paying attention to what that bass is doing. I'm trying to learn, you know, if he's spinning around on it, like there's times where you know if it's catchable or if it's not catchable by one flip. You know, you're running down the bank and you flip in there and it's like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna keep going. You flip in there and that sucker flares and turns around and is ready to eat your shit, then, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna regroup and not swing, you know, so I don't hook him on the outside of the mouth or something, but you know, and then, then get positioned on this fish and, you know, see what his attitude is or what he's doing and then, you know, proceed to, to catch the bass. But everyone's different, dude. I Some you gotta shake it in place a million times or some you gotta hop it up over their head. Like every fish is different. You just gotta kind of play around with them. So talk about why you choose a drop shot over a Texas rig or a jig on a, on a bed. So sometimes they get picky, dude. And like you flip a Texas rig in there and they don't want to follow it down. Like, it's just weird. Like they just don't want to go down into the bed and grab it or they're, they're sitting up on top and every bed has a sweet spot. Once you find that sweet spot, maybe that could get, you know, better your chances a little bit. But 
Dude, sometimes a drop shot, you know, with like a six inch leader because I can keep it and shake it in his face, you know, like continuously. Finally, they're just, okay, it's there. I gotta eat this thing. I gotta get it out of here, you know? So sometimes a drop shot, so if I can hold it in front of their face, you know, it's suspending on that bed a little bit, that gets them to bite a lot faster. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with us today. Hopefully that helps a little bit, you know, as to our approach to, you know, springtime and love's in the air. And we're just kind of cruising around looking for sight fish or spawning fish, that kind of stuff. So hopefully you learned something from this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, and uh, thanks. Have a good one. Where can we follow you, follow you at? Oh, at Julius Maisie. Instagram. Because you're going to be doing some opens here pretty soon, huh? Yeah, so I'm uh, getting ready to hit the road and fish some Bassmaster opens. So uh, I got to gotta get strong on my social media <laughs> game. You know, I'm not the best at that, so I got to work <laughs> on that a little bit. But, yeah, jo join me on there, and uh, let's travel.